next one for year 12 maths is the reverse cosine rule. Okay, now that's using the cosine rule to go backwards to find an angle. Okay, in the same way when you did trig, you could find a side or you could find an angle. We're going to play the same game. A couple of things just to remind you of. Okay, that um, if I just make sure this calculator is in degrees for a second, just by clicking setup, there it is, it's okay. All right, so um, if I type in cosine 30, I get 0 0.866. If I go cos, cos to the minus 1, sometimes called arc cos, sometimes called shift cos, and I type in 0 0.866025, oops, missed, 54038. I can look at the calculator from that. Okay, and I press that. What do you think I'm going to get? What am I hoping I'm going to get? 30. Okay, so that's what I've got there. All right? So your calculator can turn a, an angle into a decimal, which is a cos ratio, remembering that that's when we're looking from the bottom and how far around the circle it's gone. Okay, and therefore we've got the alternative one here. I will just make a point. The cosine of 330 is exactly the same. Now, if I give you an angle to find me, and that angle is clearly a reflex angle, you need to be aware of the fact that the same angle gives you, gives you the same answer. Okay? That's what we call the ambiguous case. All right? Use a bit of common sense. To play the same game with sine, we're not going to do sine today, but I'll just do it for completeness sake. Sine 30 is 0.5. Okay? So therefore, sine to the minus 1 of 0 0.5, we're expecting to be 30. Equally, please watch, sine 150 is 0 0.5. Again, if you've got an obtuse angle, yeah, look for the obtuse angle. It's called the ambiguous case. Great. So now we understand that if we've got a decimal we can very successfully turn that into a, an angle by using shift cos or shift sine as appropriate. Great. Now, you're happy with the idea of the fact that I'm going to do this freehand. And I'm just going to let this autofocus a bit, just so that it gets, gets in the right places. Thank you. So, we have a triangle. And you're used to the fact that if I call that A, then I call that B, and I call that C, and this is little a, and this is little b, and this is little c, and you've all done really well with that. Okay? And you're all okay with the fact that cosine rule is this, a squared plus, big button, I'll start again, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. And I did show you some variations around that, but what happens if I want to know not this side, opposite angle A, but I want to find angle A itself. I want to know what that angle is. And previously, you've never been able to do this. If we gave you a triangle which looked like this, okay, if I gave you a triangle previously, and I said that was 8, and that was 12, and that was 9, and I said, how big is that angle? You had no mechanism at all for finding out how that bag is, other than drawing a perfect scale drawing and measuring it. Because it's not right angled. And I haven't told you anything. So you couldn't do it. But now we can. And I'm going to show you how. And we're going to just use this formula. And all we're going to do is a bit of rearranging. Okay? So I'm going to do this fairly quickly. Just that ask. Okay? I don't mind. So we can now say that 2BC cosine A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared. That's just rearranging things. Yeah. Okay? So, cosine A equals B squared minus C squared minus A squared. Big one is a plus there. I'm sorry. Divided by 2BC. Now, that's a really simple bit of rearranging. And remember I told you that there will be some formulas on the formula sheets given to you? This is one of them. Okay, so you will be given this. But I wanted to show you where it came from. Okay? Now, at this point, using that particular formula, okay, I'm going to write it down again for you, just under here. So, cosine A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared 
divided by 2bc. Okay? Exactly the same. No change. No. Okay? If I wanted to find that angle there, whoop, let's put the question up. If I'm trying to find the angle at the top there, what letter am I going to give it? A. a. Because that's the cosine A. Remember, a capital is the side, so that's A. Yeah. Which means that that's now little a. Okay, so which one's B? It doesn't matter. Good, very good. Right, B and C then. So that's little B and that's little C. And now we're in that situation where all we've got to do is wallop the numbers in. So that's what I'm going to do. So the big mistake here, here is the huge mistake for everybody watching around the world, to pick this up now. That's the mistake. Don't do that. Write the next line first. Cos A equals 12 squared plus 9 squared minus 8 squared divided by 2 times by 9 times by 12. Okay, in actual fact, technically, I think it should be 2 times 12 times 9, but I don't really care. Okay, now this is one of those situations where you have to be careful about what your calculator is going to give you. I think the safe play is to work out the top and then work out the bottom separately first. Okay? Because you've got a divide then a times, and that's where your calculator sometimes gets messed up. Okay? So I think the safe thing to do is to get your calculator out and type in quite literally. Let's put the lamp on so you can see what's going on. There we go. Oh, a bit bright. There we go. We can see the calculator screen now. So I'm going to write 12 squared plus 9 squared minus 8 squared. And I get... 161, so I'm going to write that over here. And then on the bottom, I'm going to get, what have I got there? I've got 2 times 9 times 12. So, 2 times 9 times 12. 216. Okay, so cos A, let's come back over to the paper now. Cosine A is 161 divided by 216 which is 0 0.74537037074. Lots of people say, should you not round that up to decimal places? The answer is no, because I'm finished. Okay, here it is on the calculator. Okay, now at this point, all I'm going to do is go shift, cos, I hope you can see on the screen, and then I'm going to go the answer, which is the zero point, the whole shebang. Press enter and I get 41.8090 degrees. This is where I'm going to now use a bit of common sense and call that 41.8 degrees. And that is how you use the cosine rule to find a missing angle. Okay? There are no variations on it other than change the letters around if you like. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do as an experiment on this particular graphic calculator, because they're all slightly different, I'm going to do it all again, but I'm going to do it in one go and see if we get the same answer. We're hoping to get 0 0.7453, la, 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 la. Okay, so I'm going to type it all again. So I've got 12 squared plus 9 squared minus 8 squared divided by 2 times 9 times 12. And that rather illustrates my point, doesn't it? Yeah. And the reason for that is what we call bod mass. And what it's done is it's said divide and times take priority over minus. So what it's done, it's done 12 squared plus 9 squared plus all of that is what it's done. Okay? Now, you could, of course, put brackets in. That would have worked. So your alternative would be to go 12, let's put it down here, there we go. Oops, let's cancel that. So we could put brackets in and do it that way. But I think the moment you're now trying to remember to put brackets in, frankly, I think it was a heck of a lot easier to do what I did, which was just to work out the top and write it down, and just to work out the bottom and write it down, and then say thank you very much. I think it's a lot safer. Okay. Also, if you happen to make a mistake, and mistakes happen, as you saw in the last video, yeah, that actually put, just put the numbers in, and then we can all see where the mistake is. Thank you very much.